hello good morning as i explain the oed modules and topics now i'm going with the start with the next topic firstly i'm sharing the slides and after that i will be explain in front of you as i stop my last conversation or last conversation in in notational things here i am explaining about a conceptual model of the uml and in the same series i am going from the uh, stopping uh, completing from the first building block of a uml i am uh, moving to the next <coughs> relational relationship in the uml here I, I explained before previously explained the UML concept is depending upon three major elements. First is UML building blocks, as I discussed in previous classes. Now I am moving to the ne next, which will be a relationship. Relationship in the UML. There are four kind of relationship in the UML. First one is dependency. Second one is association. Third one is generalization and fourth one is realization. These relationships are the basic relation, relational building block of the UML. You use them to write well-formed models. Because I, we know we are creating some model for a particular thing. So we are talking about the things we are going to use and design a well-formed model. So, and moving to the next dependency as i know as i told you the relationship in the uml is classified into into the four parts first one is dependency second one is association third one is generalization and fourth one is realization now with the first dependency a dependency is a semantic relationship between two model elements in which a change to one element may affect the semantic of the other element. The, gen, the graphically a dependency is represented as a dashed line, possibly directed and occasionally including a label as figure. This figure show how dependency is show within the model now moving to the next association an association is a structural relationship that describes a set of links a link being a connection among objects aggregation is a special kind of association representing a structural relationship between a whole and its part graphically an association is presented as a solid line possibly directed as occasionally including a label and often containing other adornments such as multipl multiplicity and role names now moving to the third generalization a generalization is a specialization oblique generalization relationship in which objects of the specialized element are sustainable for objects of the generalized element. In this way, the child shares the structure and the behavior of the parent. Graphically, a generalization relationship is represented as a solid line with a hole with a hollow arrow pointing to the parent simply as shown in the figure the bottom is show the child and the head show the parent now moving to the next realization a realization is a semantic relationship between cl classifiers 
where in one classifier space specifies a constant that another classifier guarantees to carry out you will encounter realization relationships in two places between interface and the classes or components that realize them and between use cases and the collaborations that realize them graphically a realization relationship is shown as a cross between a generalization and dependency relationship simply the these four elements are the basic relational things you may include in a uml model there are also variation on these four such as re refinement trace include and extend these are four relationship which are used in the uml model now moving to the next in the series of uml concept modeling the third point is diagrams in the uml a diagram a diagram is the graphical presentation of a set of elements most often as a connected graph of vertex and arcs you draw diagrams to visualize a system from different perspectives so a diagram is projection into a system for all but the most tri trivial system a diagram represents and view of the elements that make up a system the same element may appear in all diagrams only a few diagrams or in a no diagrams at all in in theory a diagram may contain any combinational combination of things and relationship in practice however a small number of common combinations arise which are consistent with the five most useful views that that present the architecture of a software intensive system for this reason the uml includes nine diagrams a diagram is a graphical presentation of a set of element most often used as a connected graph of vertex and path you draw diagrams to visualize a system from different perspectives so a diagram is a projection into a system for all but the most tribal system a diagram represents an elded view of the element that make up a system the same element may appear may appear in all diagrams only a few diagrams or in no diagram at all <coughs> in theory a diagram may contain any combination of things and relationship in practice however a small number of common combinations arise which are consistent with the five most useful views that comprises the architecture of a software now moving to the nine diagrams first one is class diagram second is object diagram third is use case diagram fourth is sequence diagram fifth is collaboration diagram six is state diagram and seven is activity diagram and eight one is component diagram and nine is deployment diagram these are nine different type of diagram which we are using in designing our uml diagram for a particular system for a particular software these diagrams are used with the with their different different manners these diagrams are very different to each other now moving to the first class diagram a class diagram so a set of classes interface and collaborations and their relations these diagrams are the most common diagram found in modeling 
object oriented system class diagrams addresses the static design view of the system class diagram that include active classes addresses the static process view of a system component diagrams are variants of class diagrams this diagram is show what are the classes are used within the software product that will show in this diagram and what are the functions the class diagram is showing and what are the working of that particular class diagram and what are the processes are within the system by the class diagram class diagram all thing is covered which is related to the classes of the diagram is include in this class diagram now moving to the next object diagram an object diagram shows a set of objects and their relationship all the object which are used within the system within the software product within the software system all really all object related diagram are cover within the object diagram and their relationships object diagrams represent static snapshots of instance of the things found in class diagram the object diagram is basically depend upon the class diagram because it represent the static snapshot of a instance which which is found in the class diagram these diagrams address the static design view of static process view of a system as do class diagrams but from the perspective of a real or prototype typical cases the object diagram as i earlier explained that these diagrams are depending upon the class and these diagrams are static diagrams and these diagram view the static view and static process which are used within the system and which are used by the class diagram that will be show in this particular object diagram now moving to the next diagram a use case diagram use case diagram shows a set of use case and actors and their relationship use case diagrams address the static use case view of the system use case diagram also represents the static use case view of a system these this diagrams are especially important in organizing and modeling the behavior of the system the use case diagram is basically very important for designing to peek out the behavior of the system this is very important what the system going to do it's very important and how the behavior of system is 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 given by this use case diagram next sequence diagram and communication diagrams are kind of interaction diagrams and interaction diagrams show an interaction consisting of a set of objects or roles including the message that may be dispatched among them interaction diagram address the dynamic view of a system a sequence diagram is an interaction diagram that emphasize the time ordering of messages a common a communication diagram is an interaction diagram that emphasize the structural organization of the object or roles roles that send and receive messages sequence and communication diagrams represent similar basic concept but each diagram emphasize a different view of the concept sequence diagrams emphasize temporal ordering and communication diagrams emphasize the data structure through which message flow both diagram have the same manner because they both are working like a same because the main motto of both diagram to communication of messages but sequence diagram is emphasize on the 
temporal ordering and the communication diagram is on the data structure through which message flow a timing diagram show the actual times at which messages are exchanging both are all these diagram cover within the interaction diagram interaction diagram we can say interaction diagram or sequence diagram are uh, all are in a in a package because all four diagrams include and same work within the uml model and these four diagrams are very important to communicate within two objects next a state diagram a state diagram shows a state machine consisting of states transitions events and activities a state diagram shows the dynamic view of an object they are especially important in modeling the behavior of an interface class or calibration and emphasize the event ordered behavior of an object which is especially useful in modeling reactive system this diagram is very important because in this diagram what action is done after this it will be shown in this state diagram because the event ordering behavior of an object is especially show in this diagram the calibration between classes interaction and behavior of the system show in the state diagram which is especially useful in modeling re reactive systems now moving an activity diagram <coughs> an activity diagram show the structure of a process or other computation as the flow of control and data from step to step within the computation activity diagrams address the dynamic view of a system basically the activity diagram is focuses on the dynamic view of a system how the computations how the flow of control and what are the activities done within the model it will be show in the activity diagram activity diagram show each and every activity which will be done within the system now moving to the <clears throat> they are especially important in modeling the function of a system and emphasize the flow of control among object in this activity diagram especially show the control and control the flow of data and flow of information within the model it will be shown in the activity diagram moving to the next a component diagram a component diagram is show an encapsulated class and its interfaces ports and internal structure consisting of nested components and connectors component diagrams address the static design implementation view of a system they are important for building large system from smaller parts uml distinguishes a composite structure diagram applicable to any class from a component diagram but we combine the decision because the distinction between a component and the structured class is unnecessarily subtle this component diagram is basically used for a very large system to combine and create a final system <clears throat> a deployment diagram deployment diagram show the configuration of run time processing nodes and the components that live on them deployment diagrams address the static deployment view of an architecture the basically 
this diagram is very is also important because it this diagram is a last phase of a overall system because this diagram show the architectural deployment the architectural deployment of the final system or final product which which we are going to develop this will be show how to the how to the this particular development system or developed system going to be deployed a node typically host one or more artifacts now moving to the next next is the rules of the uml <clears throat> this is the third point within the concept of uml rules of the uml first is building blocks second one is the <clears throat> diagrams and third rules of the uml the uml's building blocks cannot simply be thrown together in a random fashion like any language the uml has a number of rules that spec specify what a well formed model should look like yes uml is always look <clears throat> a great model and give a proper solution with the a prototype or with the a blueprint type model a well formed model is one that is semantically self consistent and in harmony with all its related models yes uml is real, is very well formed and it show each and every relation with their all models very clearly the uml has syntactic and semantic rules for name what you can call things relationships and diagrams second scope the context that gives a specific meaning to a name Vis visibility how those these are the rules on which we are we are developing uml because uml is a well formed model and this this model present everything every relationship every diagrams very clearly show each and everything which are related within the system is very clear in front of the developer and user and other member of the software development team visibility how these names can be seen and used by the others and integrity how things properly and consistently related to one another and execution what it means to run or simulate a dynamic model move the rules of the uml encourage you but do not force you to address the most important analysis design and implementation question that push such models to become well formed over time <coughs> next common mechanism in the uml after rules and diagrams and building blocks now moving to the mechanism part of the uml which is very important a uh, building is made simpler and more harmonious by the con conformance to a pattern of common features a house may be built in a victoria or french country style largely by using certain architectural patterns that define those style the same in true of the uml it is made simpler by the presence of four common mechanism that apply consistently throughout the language first one is specification second one is adornment third one is common divisions and fourth one is extensibility mechanism moving to the first specification uml is more than just a graphical language rather behind every part of its graphical notation 
there is a specification that provides a textual statement of the syntax and semantics of that building block for example behind a class icon is a specification that provides the full set of attributes operations and <clears throat> behaviors that the class em embodies Visual visually that class icon might only show a small part of this specification furthermore there might be another view of that class that presents a completely different set of parts it is still consistent with the classes underlying specification you use the uml's graphical notation to visualize a system you use the uml's specification to state the system's detail given this split it's possible to build up a model in incrementally by drawing diagrams and then adding semantics to the models specifications or directly by creating a spe specification phrases by reverse engineering and existing system and then creating diagrams that are projections into those specifications the uml's specifications provide a semantic back plane that contains all the parts of all the models of a system each part related to one another in a consistent fashion the uml's diagram are the simply visual projections into the back plane each diagram revealing a specific interesting aspects of the system now moving to the next adornments most elements in the uml have a unique and direct graphical notation that provides a visual representation of the most important aspects of the element for example the notation for a class is inten intentionally designed to be easy to draw because classes are the most common element found in modeling object oriented system the class notation also exposes the most important aspects of a class namely its name attributes and operation a class specification may include other details such as whether it is abstract or the visible visibility of its attributes and operation many of these details can be re, 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 rendered as graphical or textual adornment to the classes basic rectangular notation for example <coughs> in the figure shows a class adorn to indicate that it is an abstract class with two public one one protected and one private operation even element in the uml's notation start with a basic symbol to which can be added a variety of adornments specified spec specific to that symbol moving to the next common divisions in modeling object oriented system the word often gets divided in several ways there is the division of class and object a class is an abstraction an object is one concrete manifestation of that abstraction in the uml you can model class classes as well as objects 
as shown in figure graphical the uml distinguishes an object by using the same symbol as its class and then simply underlying the object's name here i am showing an figure which figure show the class customer name address and phone same customer is jan customer is anyone and its name here the class of the customer and class customer have ha, class have three entities name address and phone number in this figure there is one class named customer together with three objects jan which is marked ex explicitly as being a customer object customer and an enormous customer object and ls which is which in its specification is marked as being a kind of customer object all those it is not shown explicitly here almost every building block in the uml has this same kind of class object this show tommy for example you can have use case and use case executions components and component instance nodes and node instance and so on second there is the separation of the interface and implementation an interface declares a con contract and an implementation represents one concrete rela realization of the realization of that contract responsible for faithfully carrying out the interface complete semantics in the uml you can model both interface and their implementation as shown in the figure in this figure there is one component named spelling wizard that provides two interface one i known unknown and one i spelling it also requires an interface i dictionary that must be provided by another component almost every building block in the uml has this same kind of interface implementation which to tommy for example you can have use case and the collaborations that realize them as well as operations and the methods that imp implement them third there is the separation of type and role the type declares the class of an entity such as an object and attribute or a parameter a role this describes the meaning of an entity within its context such as a class component or collaboration any any entity that forms part of the structure of another entity such as an attribute has both characteristic it derives some of its meaning from its inherent type and some of its meaning from its role within context from the figure this figure show part with role and type ticket order is also a class and ticket order having some some class within this class inherit the class which is customer class customer has also a class but ticket order ticket order is a class a main class in main class it will be inherit the next customer class extensibility mechanism 
the uml provides a standard language for writing software blueprints but it is not possible for one closed language to ever be sufficient to express all possible norms of norms of all models across all domains across all time for this reason the uml is opened indeed making it possible for for you to extend the language in controlled ways the uml's extensibility mechanism include stereotype tag value and constraints moving to the stereotype a stereotype extends the vocabulary of the uml allowing you to create new kind of building blocks that are derived from existing one but that are specify to your problem for example if you are working in a programming language such as java or c++ you will often want to model ex exceptions in these language exceptions are just classes although they are treated in very special ways typically you only want to allow them to do them to be thrown and catch nothing else you can make exceptions first class citizens in your models meaning that they are treated like basic building block by ma marking them with a with an appropriate stereotype as for the class overflow next a tagged value a tagged value extends the properties of a uml stereotype allowing you to create new information in the stereotype specification for example if you are working on a shrink wrapped product that undergoes many release release over time you often want to track the version and author of certain critical abstractions version and author are not primitive uml concepts they can be added to any building block such as a class by introducing new tagged value to that building block for example the class event queue is extended by marking its version and author explicitly now moving to the next a constraint extends the semantics of a uml building block allowing you to add new rules or modify existing one for example you might want to constrain the event queue class so that all additions are done in order as shown you can add a constraint that explicitly marks these for the operation add collectively th these three extens extensibility mechanism allow you to shape and grow the uml to your projects needs these mechanism also let the uml adopt to new software technology such as the likely emergence of more powerful distributed programming language you can add new building blocks modifying the specification of existing one and even change their semantics naturally it's important that important that you do so in controlled ways so that through these extens extensions you remain true to the uml's proposed the communication of information these are the semantics 
which are used for designing a UML diagram. All things are include to create a UML diagram. These are a very important and things mechanism are used specification and ornament common divisions and extensibility mechanism Extens extensibility mechanism the uml provides a standard language for writing software blueprint but it is not possible for one closed language to ever be sufficient to express all possible all possible norms of all models across all domains across all time for this reason the uml is open ended making it possible for you extend the language in controlled ways the uml's extensibility mechanism is include all these three the number of stereotype of classes and data types first one is thread event entity process utility <clears throat> meta classes power classes enumeration threads an activity class which specifies a light weight flow that can execute concurrently with other threads within the same process process and activity class which specified a heavy weight flow that can execute concurrently with it with other process control a class which owns almost no information about itself it represents a behavior rather than resource and directs the behavior of other objects almost having no behavior of its own entity a class which represents a resource in the real world it describes its features and their current condition and preserves its own integrity regardless of where and when it is used utility a class whose attributes and operations are all class scoped that is a class which which no instance meta class a classifier whose objects are all classes and power class a, pa a classifier whose objects are children of given parent or enumeration a user defined data type that defines a set of values that do not change these are a number of stereotype of classes that will be used within the stereotype extensibility mechanism <clears throat> these are the extensibility mechanism a constraints extends the semantics of a uml building block allowing you to add a new rules or modifying existing one thank you now today's class is over